One of the significant challenge with all of this AI stuff and chatbots, co-pilots, agents, is to ensure accuracy of responses. And despite of what you may hear from any vendor in the world and all the training that they're doing, the bottom line is your agent, your chatbot, these are customer facing technologies and you want to ensure accuracy of responses. You want to make sure that the response is correct, it is complete and it is clear. You also want to make sure that under no circumstances does your chatbot hallucinate or throw out stuff that is inaccurate and so on. There is a case of airlines where they lost a lawsuit because chatbot gave wrong information. Realistically, that chatbot represents your brand, your company, and there can be legal ramifications. So how do you ensure that chatbot responses are accurate? Sadly, there is no magic bullet, but the good news is there is a process you can follow. This is what we have done in GPT-5 for some of our largest customers. And I wanted to share how you can benefit from this. I'm also sharing it because I would like you to go in eyes wide open in terms of what does it entail to really take one of those chatbot plus AI solution, whether it's agent, whether it's chatbot, whatever you call it these days. But how do you take these solutions and ensure that they are production ready? So it all begins with curated question and answer date for chatbot to respond. You want to give it really good quality content from your knowledge articles, from your FAQs, from any kind of question and answer format. And the more you can do it in a question and answer format, the better it is. Because what we have found is good quality data that is in FAQ style format makes it easier for chatbots and the related AI models powering it and the RAG models behind it, vector devices behind it, all of that. This makes it easier for those technologies to actually understand and be more precise about answering questions. So as you embark on this, account for this time. There is time you require for content curation, for validation with your legal, your compliance, your business, your operations. You have to do this effort up front, no matter what the technology is, who the vendor is. So this is the first step, pretty important. And that brings us to the second step, which is really the guardrails. So as you're training this, you will have to adjust your guardrails, you'll have to adjust your prompts. With GPT-5, there is a prompt builder that you would use where you can do a lot of this stuff. You also have to do it on your AI. So we have used Google Cloud, we've used OpenAI, and with a lot of those models, you can write functions, you can write scripts in them to actually add additional amount of grounding. And this is super crucial when you're thinking about preventing hacking that may happen through a chatbot where someone can try to exploit a vulnerability and get from your chatbot into your AI. So there is a fair degree of work here that requires some expertise, some experience, and a lot of thinking. So that's the second part of this. And that brings us to the third portion, which is really automated validation. So you have trained on your curated data, you've put some guardrails, and a lot of this is iterative process happens back and forth. And then you want to run automated validation. You want to run these validations at scale, and you're trying to figure out if the chatbot has a variance in the response it gives. So the flow of this is the user asks a question to the chatbot, sends it to Salesforce slash GPT-5 here. GPT-5 sends it to your AI model. In this case, in this specific case, we used Google Vertex and Dialogflow. So it'll send it there and it'll get a response back, forward it back to Einstein chatbot and represent it to the user. That flow, you need to run a significant amount of time to make sure that the responses are correct, the responses are accurate, they are complete, they are clear, right? So you can have a whole set of criteria like that and assess how good these responses are. What we ended up doing was we actually wrote script that would call the Einstein chatbot API and basically automated this process. So by running it that way, we were able to go against these 6,000 questions and run a whole bunch of tests where we asked the question from the chatbot using API, got back a response. Then we took the question, the response from the chatbot and the actual response we would have expected and we sent it to a separate model. In this case, we sent it to OpenAI for long. And then we got back a response from there. So when we send it to that model, we said, grade the answer we got versus this control Q and grade it on these criteria of completeness, accuracy, of clarity, of concision, and so on. So there's a whole bunch of things. And we ran that constantly and we found there were issues, so we fixed it. For example, this is one of the huge challenge, which is you may have the same question written 15 times across a whole set of FAQs and knowledge articles. Depending on how the question was asked by 
the person on the chat. The RAG model may give you different answers. So it is super important to refine and streamline the Q&A data. You want to eliminate the duplicativeness of information and saying the same thing in five different ways. You want to keep them as unique and as comprehensive as you can. So that is the kind of gaps that this automated testing here identifies. You also get a first-hand experience of, is it hallucinate? So when we ran this, we got about 97% accuracy on these tests, which is great. You know that this thing seems to be working, but it's trusting a bunch of AI models. And what that does is that brings us to the final check. What you want your team and your vendor, whoever's team to do is do human validation. So with all of this, you still want human Q&A. Test it and see is the response good? Does it speak in our brand voice? Does it do whatever you want it to do? And any gaps you find, then go back into whether it's a data issue, whether it's an issue of prompt engineering and tightening your AI, your Salesforce prompts, or whatever you're using. But this is super important. And this is really the last line of defense in making sure that we are doing this right. And that brings us to the final part. Once the chat is done, what do you do next, right? So someone comes, they have a chat, they close the session. And when they close the session, Salesforce would automatically generate the chat transcript. And what we have done is we have built a lot of uh, instrumentation and functionality for a post-chat review and analysis. The idea here is that GPT-5 can analyze the transcript and it can generate a summary of the transcript. It identifies keywords of what was asked. Did we redirect them to an agent? Did we create a case? Did we do other actions and things like that that you may have heard recently with the whole agent conversation that's happening, right? One of the things that's really important here is we try to identify, was there a missing effect? Did the end user ask a question for which we could not get an answer? And all of these are basically updated on the chat transcript by GPT-5. And these can be then surfaced up as topics and someone can look at them and they can find gaps that they want to fill here from a curated Q&A perspective. Finally, we also run a sentiment analysis using GPT-5 on the chat transcript to see was it positive, was it negative, was it neutral. And right now we are doing this really simply. One of the other customers I was talking to, they mentioned that they would like to expand the positive, negative, neutral sentiment to significantly broader version with about 50 different attributes of what sentiment was. And the beauty is using generative AI and tools like GPT-5, you can do. So that's really the life cycle of uh, how do you ensure chatbot response accuracy. And one of the reasons this diagram is circular is because you want to make sure that you're constantly doing it because all of this needs to continually inform back your curated Q&A data. It needs to inform better guardrails. It needs to again and again bring up the need for doing automated validation as you have new questions, new content, new FAQs, new knowledge articles and things like that. One of the other things we do at GPT-5 to make this easier is we have built a synchronization engine for Salesforce knowledge articles. So when you have new articles, you can actually use GPT-5 and you can specify which of these articles need to be sent to the right model and train it. If they are for some specific use cases, you can do some annotation on it. So there's some optimization that we have done to make it more streamlined for Salesforce knowledge article. For knowledge articles from your website, we can automatically index them for that. So they will automatically be, your rag can be trained on them. For additional content, you can load that as PDF or CSVs and the rag can be trained on it. So my point is that what you're seeing here in this cycle are some fairly significant kind of work that are non-trivial. And the challenge with most customers is as they go from a simple hello world type app that you may have created in a demo environment or in some conference or somewhere, as you go from there to actual real world production, chatbot implementations and agent implementations for better customer success and support, you realize that all of this work needs to happen. And I think this is the challenge for people who are tasked with bringing AI to customer success and support and reduce cost and automate things. So that's the journey that we have been on. It's super exciting. We have some customers who are doing a lot of very interesting work in the space and we're glad that we are getting to be part of that firsthand. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. If you're thinking about doing something with Einstein chatbot plus AI or some other version of that, let me know. Happy to talk and share our experiences and see if we can be up. Thank you so much.